find the text in the Old Testament. If you turn there with me, find the Old Testament. And let's turn to the book of Habakkuk. Appreciate that to Neil and Terry Lynn. That's always a blessing. And I like those old kind of songs. They bless my heart. Appreciate the balance that's here. I'm glad you don't have to be exclusive. We're going to exclude the world. But uh, somebody said, I don't like those kind of songs that they get to pat in their foot. And, well, you try and tell me that God moves in, you can't feel something. Then what happened to you when you got saved and what happened to me when I got saved? Something big as God move in, you'll be able to feel something. Amen. Well, I don't like that toe tapping kind. I, I, I could sense just one or two of y'all in here. You music purists think you better than us. Look up here just a minute. Every music has timing. I've seen horn blowers pat their feet to keep time. I don't know much about it, but it's got to have timing. Somebody help me. Don't y'all die on me, bless God. This, if you don't like this, you won't like the rest of it. I can tell you that. No, it's been so good to be here. And uh, man, the choir sang so good. It's a blessing. Let me encourage you not to lose the focus that your ministry is not isolated to the West Coast. The great access that we have through the World Wide Web and all of the uh, technology of today. Man, the North Valley Baptist Church is known across the world. And, uh, and that's the truth. My, my sister was in New Guinea and uh, her and her husband, Brother Rick Camperson, he pastors in Atlanta, Georgia. They were there on a missions trip and they were having a service in one of the villages, a distant village, uh, in fact, in that village, there was only one access pole to electricity, and uh, they all shared the, the outlet. They didn't have much uh, modern facilities, but they had some electricity and lived in thatch huts. Many of you have been on the foreign soil, and you know what it's like. And they were going from hut to hut, my sister passing out flyers about the meeting, and we're inviting people to the meeting, said, so we're going to have a, a church service down here tonight. I want you to come. I want you to be a part. And my sister knocked on one particular door, really just hollered through the door. And uh, one of the tribesmen came to the door and she handed him the brochure, inviting him to the service. He said, oh, he said, uh, I am a follower of Tony Hudson. <laughs> and she thought, you know, this can't be true. She said, say it again, sir. He said, oh, said, I see Baptist. I am a follower of Tony Hudson. And she said, well, that's hardly. She said, that's my brother. Said, I'm, I, I'm Sherry Hudson Camperson. I said, are you, are you talking about brother Tony Hudson? He said, hey, man. <laughs> she said, that's the right one. And uh, she asked and said, well, how did over here, how have you heard about Tony Hudson. And he said, on the, on the World Wide Web, said, I have tapped into the North Valley Baptist Church website and said, saw message uh, almost but not altogether. And, uh, and then he got to preaching the message almost word for word, almost all together from the introduction all the way through. And hey, God's using the ministry here. Maybe further than we can see with the eye, but thank God for the investment you made. Now, I want to help you tonight. I'd rather not preach than just entertain you. I feel like we could entertain. Southerners have a tendency to entertain people out here. They just like to hear us talk. <laughs> I can talk people just look. And, you know, My son ordered uh, the other day at the restaurant in San Francisco. They said, what would you like to drink? He said, a Sprite. <laughs> and she said, sir, he said, Sprite. Four times she finally, we had to say Sprite. Ah, she said, you guys. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. When I'm in San Francisco, man, it's a hard press to be all things to all men over there. Say amen. But, uh, praise the Lord. <laughs> amen. Sweetheart. 
God help us. I pastored in UCLA, in the upper corner of Lower Alabama, in Bullock County, Alabama, for the first ten years of my ministry. Spent there, and the Lord had blessed our church, and we'd experienced some numeric growth, uh, abnormal for that area. By the way, soul winning works no matter where you do it. Knocking on doors and witnessing will pay. And uh, I was invited to an all-black pastor's gathering. And I'd never been in an all-black service. I'd never been where it was just black people. I mean, I'm so white, honestly. Y'all understand? I'm an Anglo-Saxon to the bone. I'm so white, they used to accuse my mother of bathing me in Clorox bleach. I mean, I'm white. It's scary. If you were to see my legs, if I raise my britches high enough, listen, it'd blind most of y'all in here, praise God. They used to call me names like Casper the Friendly Ghost when I was young. And I was invited to speak, and I'd never been in, a, in an atmosphere like that. And man, they got excited about the offering. I mean, they took out the handkerchiefs when it was offering time. Our people take out handkerchiefs, but it's usually to wipe the tears as they write those checks. But finally, the preacher got up, and he's going to introduce me. And he said, well, now I come to tell you this morning. That organ said, zoo, zoo. <laughs> And brother said, uh-huh. And them sisters said, hey, hey, man. I told y'all I was white. By then, I looked like a Q-tip dipped in iodine. <laughs> My face turned red. He said, Brother Tony's with us this morning, yeah. That organ said, zoo, zoo. <laughs> and lady said, uh-huh. He said, come lay on us what God has laid on you. And I thought, man, what God laid on me, I forgot 10 minutes ago. <laughs> Nerve wracking. I went to the pulpit and I looked at the crowd from my left to right. And I thought that's what they're used to hearing. And I'm an old-fashioned mountain preacher. And uh, I hope I can communicate. I took a big, deep breath. I said, now, I may not do like the brothers do, but I'll do the best I can. And lady said, yeah. <laughs> and organ, zoot, zoot, right in there. And I've tried this week to communicate. I hope with my broken English you can understand me. Habakkuk chapter number 3, if you turn there, we're on page 958. I'm going to read verse 16 in just a moment, but to give you just a backdrop of what's taking place. If you read through this three-chapter book, you find a two-way conversation. A conversation between Habakkuk, the great prophet of God, and Jehovah God Almighty. Now, mind you, these are days of open vision. No closed canon, no finished book. And so God was speaking directly. God was conversing. If you hear and read, God makes a statement and Habakkuk responds. Habakkuk makes a statement and God responds. And he's expressing his judgment to come. God's expressing that though they are disobedient. I still have mercy. And man, thank God for mercy. When we were yet without strength, thank God in due season Christ died for the ungodly. And the grace that bring us salvation hath appeared unto all men. Thank God for his mercy and his grace. We don't deserve it. The nation of Israel had turned their back on the God that had delivered them out of Egyptian bondage. Had brought them across a Red Sea on dry ground. Fed them and the wilderness experience and through Joshua's reign and leadership took them over into the promised land. But yet, with all of that blessing of God, they had turned their back on the true and living God. Sad but true. And Malachi uh, talked about the judgment of God in his last book. These prophets of old were proclaiming the judgment of God. And he says to him in verse 16, this is Habakkuk. Responding to God after he hears the specifics of his judgment. And by the way, the God of this Bible is a just God. I may have hit that nail a time or two this week, but I don't think it hurt for our young people to hear. You, you be not deceived. Galatians 6, verse 6 and 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. 
If he sows to the flesh, he'll of the flesh reap corruption. If he sows to the spirit, he'll of the spirit reap life everlasting. So therefore let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. We're living in days, I believe America is under the judgment of God. We have to live with our doors locked. Some of you white-haired saints can remember leaving your keys in the switch and going into the, the shopping centers. You better not do that around here now. You better not leave your house unprotected. We're living in days of judgment. And God announces his judgment in specifics. And then he says in verse 16, Habakkuk the prophet, When I heard, my belly trembled. My lips quivered at the voice. Rottenness entered into my bones. And I trembled in myself. Now notice these words. That I might rest in the day of trouble. When he cometh up unto the people, he will invade them with his troops. Notice these words, that I might rest in a day of trouble. Our Heavenly Father, we need you tonight. And we praise you for the good songs of Zion that we've heard sung. We thank you that you're a God who hears and answers prayer. And Lord Jesus, as we come to you uh, with humbled hearts uh, uh, in a bold entrance to ask for help tonight, I pray that you'd hear me as you've heard me before. I pray not just for my behalf as standing here, but Lord, on the behalf of every listener within the walls and those across the seas, maybe through the internet access that this evening would hear the message that's preached. I pray God Almighty that you'd open the hearts of the listeners. We pray that the word of God, this incorruptible seed would fall on good ground. And Lord Jesus, we pray even on this Sunday night that if there be one in our midst who's never been saved, who's never met the Savior, I pray tonight they'd find him, they'd get to know him, and they'd be in our family. For those who are here weighted down with burdens, your burden lifter. Oh God, we'll cast our care on you and trust that you'll meet the needs. Bless Dr. Jack Treber in this great work. I pray God length of days in his life. We don't know when you'll come. We'll, we're expecting an imminent return, a soon return. But until you get here, I pray you'd touch his body. And I pray you'd strengthen him. Lord, thank you for his vision. Thank you for his desire to please you and not man. And I pray you'd keep your hand upon him and his staff and his family in this good place. As they stand firm as a watchtower for the old time way. Bless them and help them. Use this message to change the future of this ministry in a good way. For we ask it now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. Amen. Amen. That I might find rest in a day of trouble. I find myself often just like the prophet Habakkuk. I've never got weary of the way. Thank God Jesus said I am the way. The truth and the life and no man cometh unto the Father. But by me, he said in John 10, 9, he said, I'm the door. By me, if any man enter in, said he shall be saved and go in and out and find pastures. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. I, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I've never got tired of the way. But I have got tired in the way. There's an old-fashioned song we sang in our book at home. It's The Glory Land Way is the title of it. It starts off, I'm in the way, the bright and shining way. I'm in the glory land way. Old-time saints used to use vernacular that we don't use as often today. They talk about getting saved. They're about getting in. It's scriptural, by the way. By the way, if you're going to speak, speak as the oracles of God. It's 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. I'm glad I'm in Christ tonight. I've been engrafted in as a Gentile like a, like a wild olive branch. But praise God, I'm in. Amen. Thank God we're in Christ. It's a good place to be. And I'm glad I'm saved. I've never been disappointed with Christ. But as we sojourn and as we pilgrimage in this toil and strain of life, I get weary in the way. Here the prophet makes a statement. I've heard the judgment of God. I've seen what God plans to do to a nation that I might find rest in a day of trouble. Now, by the way, he didn't say that I might quit in a day of trouble. He didn't say that I might throw in the towel in a day of trouble. That I might retire in a day of trouble. He said, I just need some rest. 
That's why the Bible said they that wait upon the Lord. That word wait is a, not a term of anticipation. You misunderstood that word if you thought it was. It's a term of service. You go to the right restaurant, the waiter has a, uh, a towel on his arm. He's got uh, an insignia, a wearing over his shoulder on his arm. I'm your waiter. I'm here to serve you. The Bible said they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Amen. It's not time to quit. We're too near the end to throw in the towel now. We want renewed strength. We would think, well, what we need to do is go on a southern gospel cruise. Now, by the way, I'm not against them. If you'd pay the way, I'd go. Amen. And I'm going to go on a seven-day gospel cruise. Praise God. And we're going to have a good time on the cruise and all we can eat. But let me assure you that when you get back from the cruise, look here, the grass will be taller. And that rebellious teenage son will be just as rebellious before, after you get back as he was before you left. Look up in here. And that borderline Christian daughter, look up in here. Amen. Who's living for the world and giving you a lot of trouble and difficulty at home. Hey, she's going to be just as much trouble when you get back. And the bills will still need to be paid. I don't think we can escape the service of God and find rest for our souls. The ways of God are paradox. Many times we study the Bible. The first shall be last and the last shall be first. That's a paradox. Give and it shall be given unto you. We think make all you can, then can all you make, and then sit on the can. And boy, we'll have a lot. We'll listen to Burkett and we're smarter than everybody else. But God's way is give more and you'll get more. Tithe and then give above your tithe. If you want some more, give above your tithe. If you want some more, give above your tithe. And if you want some more, give above your tithe. Amen. Give and it shall be given unto you. Amen. That's scriptural, by the way. Amen. I mainly stay with the King James. Is everybody okay? That's scriptural, by the way. Hey, man, I'm tired of all these religious people telling me about these shows they watch about finances. I got my book on it. Give. You broke, give more. That's Bible. Everybody all right? Okay, I'm just checking your blood pressure before we get too deep into this thing. It's a paradox. Give. Now, he says, come unto me, all ye that are weary and are heavy laden, and I will give you the rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn to me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And you shall find rest for your souls. Now, that's a paradox. My yoke is easy. A yoke is a representation of labor. In our country, in Tennessee, they still plow mules. Many farmers on hillsides, it's too steep. You turn a tractor over, you, it's a long way to the bottom. They have collars and hames and trace chains. These are implements of labor. Single tree, double shovel. This is not Greek. This is all English. Amen. The Filipinos that come from rural areas know of the, the water buffalo. He's an uh, a, a, a animal of labor. He plows the rice fields with the yoke that he wears. The yoke represents labor. Now, the Bible said, my yoke is easy. Yokes are heavy. And my burden is light. That's like saying my ugly is pretty. <laughs> my fat is skinny. And my stank sure does smell good. I tell you. <laughs> my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. And you shall find rest for your souls. And that's not all he said. Take my yoke upon you and then learn of me. Yeah. One of the most difficult things you can do is discipline yourself to study. God had to call me to preach. I can't stand school. Y'all just pray for me. Pray for me. I've got to get victory. I hate school. I drive by school. I close my eyes. I hate my children have to go to school. I mean, I, the only thing I like about school is football practice. Say amen. And I didn't say soccer either, bless God. I'm American, bless God. I, I ain't almost. I'm all together. Hallelujah. European communist. What was I talking about before I got rudely interrupted? <laughs> I mean, man, I can't. But God called me to preach. And when he called me, he created and cultivated an appetite for spiritual things. 
as a newborn babe desires to send the milk of the word, that they may grow thereby. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that did not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. There are many within the walls of this meeting house tonight who are carrying, you're, you're weighted down, you're about to throw in the towel because you're missing out on some truth. You've got to learn of me. By the way, the will of God's much better than the alternative. The way of the transgressor is the hard way. You're still there? I'm glad there's a way to rest. Would you agree with me tonight that we're in days of unrest? Socially, we're at unrest. Our nation's in a mess. Y'all know it's the truth. God help what we got to pick from for a president. I never thought we would entertain, I mean, even entertain having a woman run for president. There's a biblical curse on a nation who's run by children and women. I'll take you to it at the service. Amen. Look here. We're living in that day. I never thought we would even, I mean, just say what you will. I thought Hussein was the fellow we was trying to catch. And now we got one running for president. If I was him, I'd change my name to Leroy White. Amen, friend. Look up here. Somebody help me. Oh, Barack Obama, Hussein, God help. That scares me. Somebody, hey, can I get a witness? I'm nervous about that kind of talk. Amen, friend. Hey, man. Well, we may not make it out of here, but I'm trying. Let's go. Days of social unrest, days of emotional unrest. If we were to have the pills poured out on the ground that Baptist people are taking, honestly, we could skate to the foyer. We got a pill to get up, a pill to go down. We got a lady in our church, she's complaining. I mean, she took so many pills. She's had, what they call it? She said, Brother Hudson, y'all pray for us and everything. My legs, I've got restless leg syndrome. And I'm trying to get enough money to pay for the prescription. Prescription for restless leg syndrome. I know, I've got a prescription. Cut your own grass. Walk a mile before you go to bed. Amen. And when you lay down, listen, it won't take long to go to sleep. Amen. Your legs will be still, I guarantee you. Restless leg syndrome. My legs just jerk all the time. Do something. I, I, hey, I'm talking about that's kinetic energy. Everybody all right? I mean, that's, you're stored up. It's potential energy. It's time to do. You got, you got stuff wound up like an eight-day clock. Do something, bless God. You'll sleep. Man, we're so hooked on chemicals. Financially, we're in a mess. Most everybody in here has got at least one credit card maxed out. Don't bow your head. I'm not ready to pray yet. I'm telling you, man, I'm sitting on furniture that I hadn't paid for yet. It was one of them deals. Buy now and pay no payments till the year 2011. I thought, man, Jesus will be back. I'm going to let the beast of the false prophet take up the payments. Bless God. Man, I said, get our set for every room in the house. Bless God. We're in a mess. We're in a mess religiously. Even in our circles, there's such unrest. And I'm and listen, if you think I'm turning now, bless God, I come in here on the old-fashioned way, I'll be leaving on the old-fashioned way. Whether it's popular or unpopular, whether it opens doors or shuts doors, I'm staying with God's way, bless God. Amen. We're at unrest. Look at chapter 1. I'm going to give you a prescription of how to find rest in the day of trouble and we'll be gone. You good listeners. Notice verse 1, chapter 1, page 955. The burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. I want you to underline the burden of Habakkuk. I believe the first step to scriptural rest. I'm talking about scriptural rest, biblical rest. Not inactivity. Not laziness. But scriptural rest is in a proper burden. God knows how much you can handle. God knows what kind of loads you can tote. 
This was not some self-made burden. This was not some egotistical desire to compete with another. But he was in the will of God. He saw a burden. Hey, that God Almighty had revealed unto him. I'm finding in our circles today, even in our church at home, I find oftentimes we're trying to keep up with the Joneses in more ways than one. Look up here, parents. Not everybody's called to preach. I'm glad there's play. I'm glad there's young men who are called. But the worst thing in the world for you to do is to push your son into the ministry. I thank my God who can be faithful having put me into the ministry. There's a lot of unrest today because of the burdens that we place on ourselves. Are y'all listening to me? I mean, man, we're talking. I mean, uh, you young boys, when you leave here, look, you just spent, you graduates of this Bible college. Hey, it's not wrote down that you have to start a Bible college. Dr. Tom Malone, one of my great heroes, he said, Brother Tony, if I had an enemy that I really hated, said I'd try to talk him into starting a Bible college. <laughs> Look up in here. Hey, we've got one right here. You got a Golden State Bible college. It seems as though everybody get about 300 and think you need to write a book. Hey man, I got friends of mine, they hit 250, bless God, they had to write a book on how to run 250. <laughs> how I finally attained, how I got my name. Man, you pay enough, you can get your name on anybody's paper. Hey man, friend. Hey man, you give enough, look up in here. Hey, I'm trying to help you just a minute. Many within the walls of this building tonight are weary in the way. Because they're toting a burden God never intended them to tote. We better tote a God-given burden. You can't duplicate ministries. God never made a snowflake the same. There's scriptural adherence that we have. There's boundaries that the Bible puts for us. But hey, there's no cookie-cutter ministries. I know of a lot of young men who, who are at unrest. They'll never reach a place of satisfaction because in their mind, man, they can't duplicate Jack Howell's ministry. Oh, my, look up in here. If I thought I had to have 25,000 next Sunday to please God, listen, I'd hang it up. Let's be realistic. Hey, we don't have that kind of crowd in Murfreesboro. Man, we in Tennessee. Y'all understand? We have to dig people up and find them, bless God. Amen. <laughs> it's not an urban area, man. God help us. Are y'all listening? If I thought I had to duplicate, man, if I thought I had to have four pianos on the platform to please God, God help us. We can't even fit the one we got. Are y'all listening? We had to knock out walls for the one concert grand we've got. Hey, I, if I had to duplicate, you're in a coma, young man, if you think you're going to leave this place and duplicate this building. It took 30-something years to get here. Hey, you're toting the burden God never intended for you to tote. If you'll be faithful in the small things. Hurriedly, let me say that his burden was a burden that was spawned by an awareness. Look at verse number two. Oh Lord, how long shall I cry and thou wilt not hear? Even cry out unto thee of violence and thou wilt not save. Why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance for spoiling and violence are before me? And there are that rise up strife and contention. Therefore, the law is slacked and judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Therefore, wrong judgment proceedeth. Can you see this? This man of God, as he looked beyond the realm of, the, of his people, his ministry, and he looked out into a lost and dying world. You know what to help you get the right burden? Quit looking at your little old personal petty problems and go to looking at what's happening on, out in society. He was aware. An awareness of what's taking place bothered him. Some of you are living in isolation, and that's never been the call of God. We've been called to separation, not isolation. There's a misnomer being propagated among some of our ranks. I see it all the time. Just get our little four and no more. Have our little home church. Problem with that, who's going to be your deacons and how are you going to have Lord's Supper? There's two offices in the church, bishop and deacon. Everybody okay? 
all these renegades will start their own little thing at home. You won't have God's approval on it, I can tell you that. We've never been called to isolation. Your kids are so good they can't go to Sunday school. Look up in here. If your pastor sanctions Sunday school, it's a good one. And you're a rebel not to let them go. You mind if I preach what the Lord's laid on my heart? It's too late now. Amen. We had some in our, in our town thought these kids was too smart to be with our, with our kids. God help. Your little demon-possessed kid just as mean as my public school kid. And by the way, my public school boy can whoop yours. Amen, friend. Hey, everybody okay? You're burdened. You've become isolated. No, the call of God, even his prayer was, I pray not that you would take them out of the world, but that you would deliver them from evil. That's what the Lord prayed. Here was the prayer. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Y'all listening? And some of you are trying to isolate instead of separate. Hey, we're in the world, but not of the world. We're a light set on a hill. Everybody listening now? He was aware that other people are hurting. There's other people besides your family. Well, we just can't go on Wednesday nights and soul winning because well, that's our family night. That's our family night. Why not make soul winning? Every night's family night. Everything we do at church is family night. My daddy, he's, he raised some good young'uns. Raised a real good boy. And... Uh, <laughs> We'd go to church at Forest Hills Baptist Church 15, 20 minutes early, sometime earlier, and he'd, he'd, we'd have family night. By the way, long before Bill Gothard came on the scene, this book was working. Long before the character sketch books ever got here. Everybody okay? And, and he, we'd go down, he'd say, he'd say, now, I won't let, Tony, I want you to straighten the hymn books on this section. And KK, you get that section. Donna, you get that section. And Sherry, you get that section. And when I come back, let's see who's got the straightest books. Hey, we had family night. Y'all listening? Hey, what you doing? You copping out. You've just become isolated. And I'm going to tell you, that burden's pretty heavy, the burden of guilt. When you look back and say, I've wasted it all. Amen, friend. You better get involved in this local church and tote the burden that Jesus had. Amen. He had an awareness. He had an annoyance. Can you sense the annoyance in this path? How long are you going to let me see all this going on out here? By the way, can I stop and say, man, hey, O.J. Simpson is as guilty. Look up here as Billy the Kid is. <laughs> Amen. I cannot understand why they let these, these sports figures. Kobe Bryant makes me want to vomit. Amen. I'm just going to see how fundamental y'all really are. I'm against the Lakers, bless God. Say amen. Bunch of dope addicts. Bunch of AIDS patients. Hey, I'm against them, bless God. Amen. Bunch of dope heads, look whoremongers. It don't bother you that that's the champions for our young people to follow. Pac-Man Jones. I'm so glad they fired him from the Titans. That dreadlock looking thing, they ought to throw him in jail just for his haircut. Amen, friend. It don't bother y'all. It don't bother you, man, that these, hey, these bunch of pimps and dope addicts and drug dealers, hey, they get off for anything. It ain't bothering you. It ought to bother you. Oh, time, I feel, I know what's the matter. They've forgotten that. That they, 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 they've let slip that forgotten commandment in Ephesians. Be ye therefore angry. And sin not. It ought to bother you. There's something wrong when same-sex marriage is taking place next door to y'all and it don't bother you. It ought to bother you. It ought to be an annoyance. I'm telling you, hey, we're under all kind of burdens. But we ought to be getting under the right burden. Amen. The burden was a step. Notice his awareness. Notice his annoyance. But notice verse 5. Notice verse 5 very closely. Behold ye among the heathen. That's where we are. And regard and wonder marvelously. For I will work a work in your days. Which ye will not believe though it be told to you. He not only had an annoyance and an awareness. But he had an assurance. That's good. 
You know what will bring you rest? Is look, it ain't always going to be this way. And by the way, he said, I'll work a work in your days. Did you know people are still getting saved? We're, we're not as excited about it as we ought to be. But I, I couldn't help it this afternoon. I called to check how the services went back at home. And Brother Joel said, man, Brother Tony, Sister Cindy and Brother Jackie. He's one of our preachers in our church. Said his daughter-in-law got saved this morning. Said his son, Timmy. Said he came to the altar and he's away from God. He's down there praying with his family and said his mom and dad was down there praying with him. And while he was praying at the altar, said his wife raised her hand. She is lost. And said she come down, got on a mourner's bench right there and he had to tap Miss Cindy. Said, Miss Cindy, said your daughter-in-law wants to get saved over here. And, and, and I'm talking about just in a few seconds. Hey, pass from death unto life. Resurrected from the dead. Regenerated and born from above. Say, bless God. Hey, born again, bless God. Hey, just in a few seconds. It's still happening. I'll work a work in your days. Did you know drunks are still being sobered? And look up at her. You don't have to have no 12 steps. We, even fundamental circles are undermining the power of transformation. I wouldn't put I, all that U's and R's and A's. What about altars? I still believe a drunk man can leave that pew. And come down here on this mourner's bench and call on God and get up sober as a judge. And never crave it again. If I didn't believe it, I'd quit preaching. If I didn't believe God could clean a dope attic up. Route six. Captain. She's a homeless lady. She lived on the streets. Her husband laid her shack up before they got saved. He was the number one dope dealer. She found him, thought she had to step up. Married into a hellacious life. Y'all listening? But our bus just came by and kept knocking on the door. <laughs> kept knocking on the door. And finally, Will, their son, got saved by the grace of God. Came one Sunday morning to get baptized. They came to watch him get baptized. You know how it works. And they came and they got under conviction. And they got saved by the grace of God. And life turned around. I'm talking about 180 degrees. Now they're the captain of the route. Are y'all listening? Living right, looking right. I'm trying to tell you something, good friend. He's still working to work in the midst of the days. Don't you focus so much on those who are failing. Why don't you focus a little bit on those who are succeeding by the grace of God? It'll give you some assurance he's still able Habakkuk's first step was a burden. Notice chapter 2 and verse 2. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. We're talking about running. We're talking about serving. We're talking about rest versus weariness. Said, Write the vision. Jot it down. I believe the second step to spiritual renewal, spiritual refreshment, spiritual rest is not only we see a burden, but we see a book. The Bible. Write the vision. Can I quickly say this book? According to verse number three, the vision is yet for an appointed time. By the way, the time's been full. We got all 66 canonized books. Hey, we don't need no book of Mormon. I watched that heresy, that lie they put out. And now you've heard of the Bible, but now get the rest of the story. I got the rest of the story. Revelation, bless God. That's all the story. He said, it's a for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak in that line, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, and it will not tarry. The Bible is now complete. I want to quickly say that the book that we need for rest is a relevant book. Now that's old and everything. That was a long time ago. I hear some of the television preachers talk about well, that was in another uh, customs. Those were different customs. 
when they speak about modesty. Y'all listening? It still works today. It still works today. We've kind of second guessing the Bible. We've got to get Dr. Phil's take on it. And Oprah. I said Oprah. I know it's Oprah. But when you want to disgrace somebody, you pronounce their name wrong. <laughs> Oprah. Amen. We, we got to get Oprah's opinion. We got to get, what would Dr. Phil say? I'm going to tell you, this Bible still works. Ma'am, if you want respect from your children, you need to give honor to your husband. That got awfully quiet. I felt a little kink right there. I don't, I don't know much about fishing, but when I get hung up on a stump like that, I just keep circling until I get off. I said, hey, you, you back talk him. You can expect back talk from your children. You sash your husband, mystery. Amen. Dis disrespect him and just count on it. It's coming. You'll reap what you sow. Amen. I just don't know why my children don't respect me. There's the answer. It's relevant. Husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church. And gave himself for the I wonder how many times I've not counted it. I ought to count it. I'm going to count it now that I propose the question. How many times does the Bible say God loves us? I've had people come into my office for counseling. By the way, I don't do much counseling unless you come Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night for a month. They came in for some counseling. They have marital problems. And, and I said, well, I said, you know, the husbands that love the wife as Christ love the church. I said, when was the last time you told your wife you loved her? Well, she knows I love her. I sign the paycheck and give it to her every week. What more does she want? Shirt off my back. She knows I love her. I said, when's the last time you told her you loved her? Y'all listening? Hey, people like to hear it too. I'm talking about the book's relevant. You apply scriptural truth. Look right here. And it'll make a difference in your life. It'll work for you. Amen. It always has worked. And it always will work. It's a rewarding book. The story's told of Sister Gladys down in Ringgold, Georgia, up in North Georgia, near Chattanooga. I was in a meeting and she testified of this. She stood up in a meeting and said, Preacher, could I say a word for the Lord? She's in her 80s. And the preacher said, Say on, sister. And she said, I just want to thank the Lord for saving my soul. That's how we started off down in the South. And it's, all, it's always appropriate to thank the Lord for saving your soul. And she said, I just want to thank the Lord for saving my soul. And she said, I'll never forget how it happened. And she began to explain that they had a protracted meeting. That was an extended meeting, a meeting with a starting date with no closing date. They'd been three weeks in meeting. And the public schools during those days were letting the schools out in the morning. They'd go from the time that the bell rang till lunchtime. And they would go to school. And then from lunchtime till three, they had lunch. And then they would have lessons in the afternoon. This was the third week of meeting. They'd been in meeting every morning and every night, every morning and every night, every morning and every night. And one particular day, they let out at lunch. They came back to the schoolyard and the children were playing in the yard. And some of them playing baseball with a rock and a stick. And others playing tag, some climbing a tree. But they were so over playing church. There was a little boy. He was acting like that old time mountain preacher that's preaching in that tent meeting. Boy, he had his ear cup. He said, glory to God, brother. I, I tell you, amen, amen. I, I, you better get saved. That's right. I, are you going to go to hell? Amen. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah. I, I mean, he's just playing preacher. He'd jump up on a stump and preach. There's two little girls playing worshipers. They're acting like granny and mama. He'd get to preach pretty hard. They'd say, Was playing church, giggling, laughing. He'd preach on, they'd shout on. Directly, they looked over there and Gladys was on her knees in the schoolyard and tears were streaming down both sides of her cheek. And they knew something was a matter and they ran and got the teacher and the teacher had no spiritual discernment. When she saw Gladys on her knees, she said, Gladys, she said, you want to get saved? She said, huh? She said, you call on God, he'll save your soul. She said, you help me. And there in that school dirt playground, she called on God and God saved her soul. I'm talking about while they was playing church. 
God rewarded the seed that had been planted. Look up here, Sunday school teacher. Don't you get tired? Let me give you some refreshment. Let me give you some encouragement. You say, my class, are, they're not even listening. Hey, you don't know what they hear. You just keep on preaching and you keep on praying and you keep on presenting the word of God. I'm telling you, good friend, hey, it will get results. It's a rewarding book. It's a revealing book. You don't rest. Man, I'm confused by what's taking place. Get in the Bible. It's a revealing book. Now, by the way, you know, it's kind of one of those books that you have to sometime develop an appetite for. Now, listen to me. You won't rest. When I grew up, we was raised to eat everything on our plate. Somebody say amen. amen. But I'll never forget the first time my mama brought squash home that I can register. The word squash. She said, we haven't squash tonight. I said, I don't want nothing. Somebody done stepped on. I said, no, no. I said, I want mine unsquashed, mama. She said, oh, son. And, 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 and she, and it, I mean, it looked like gourds. She's cutting those yellow crook neck squash up. Well, I'm feeling something on it right now. And she got to cook it. She steamed them and put onions in there with them. Man, I'm telling you, first time I ate it, I, I had to get over the term squash. But it didn't take long when it hit, hit that tongue and that palate of my mouth. But as she began to minister to me. Amen. That's what Peter's mother-in-law did. She wasn't preaching. She fed him some squash. Amen. Ministered unto him. Man, I fed, it tasted good. Now I can eat it anyway. I can eat it fried in patties. I can eat it with a cayenne pepper put on it. I'm to, anyway, I'm talking about you just bring me some squash, bless God. And I might even eat it raw if you get the right dressing to dip it in. Amen. Y'all don't eat them here, but in our country we eat turnip greens. Collards and turnips. Y'all don't even know what that is, but for you that do, I'm going to make a point. For you that don't, just suffer through till I get to the next one. Amen. I like to hear myself tell this story. Turnip greens. My mama used to get them and they'd pick them in the field. They'd come back in and we had a two-bay sink. Are y'all listening to me? And she'd put them in one side of the sink, run cold water over it and wash them. And then she'd move it to the other side of the sink. There'd be grit and sand all in the bottom. I'm thinking, man, these are nastiest things. Then she'd wash it again and move them to the other side. I got any Southerners in here at all? You feeling it, ain't you, brother? Praise God. When I said collards, you just lit up. Praise God. She'd wash them, put them on the other side, and, wash, and, and, and she's washing all that grit and sand. And then she began to cook these turnip greens. If you've never, heard, if you've never smelt turnip greens cooking, honestly, I mean, it, 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 it is an acquired taste. It almost smells nasty. I walked in the house. I said, what happened? I, I, th I thought the toilets was backing up. And it stank, had a strong smell. And mama said, hush, boy, you're going to like it. She knew me pretty good. <laughs> boy, she cooked him things down. You know what I'm talking about. Don't act like, just because you come out, don't act like you don't know. You know what I'm talking about. And, and she cooked them down. And when she cooked them down, and she, I'll never forget when she served it onto my plate. I looked and it looked like a chawed tobacco. It looked like somebody done chewed tobacco on it. It looked like, and spit it out. And I said, Mama, somebody done eat these. It's green and wadded up, soggy. But I got to eating them. Are y'all listening? Hey, I learned to like it. I'm trying to tell you this book is revealing. And the more you look into it, the more you're going to like it. And the more you let it work on you, my friend, I'm telling you, the more you're going to like it, it'll help you. It's like apples of gold and pictures of silver, the Bible said. Thank God for the Bible. It's a rewarding book. It's a revealing book. It's a... Revelant book. Look at chapter 3, and I'm hurrying. This is all introduction. I'm going to get to my message in a minute. Y'all really listening good. Chapter 3. Notice these words in verse 1. A prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet. Not only did he have a burden and he had a book, but he had a beckoning. The most underused privilege that we have is the privilege of the bent knee. 
You have not because you ask not. Matthew 18, 19. And again, I say unto you, if any two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, they shall ask and it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. With the help of the Lord, I probably could quote, with the help of the Lord, I probably could quote about 26, 27 proof texts on prayer and, and, and maybe some more would come up. But man, y'all all Christian school, you know the verses, don't you? Look up in here. Man, you Bible college graduates and students. I'm trying to tell you something. It's a shame that we know what to do and won't do it. A tragedy has to come for us to pray. We're going to start a prayer chain now. We let some kind of, some kind of great disaster come and our, and our nation calls on God. 9-11, we're going to open all the doors of all the churches. We want you to come and we want to call the nation to prayer for about 24 hours. And the dust hadn't settled and we're back to the ACLU and their arguments. But Habakkuk said, if I'm going to find rest, I've got to find it in prayer. The fear that, the fear that opened the door of prayer. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Look here, I know we're to approach the throne of God boldly. But at the same time, he is our father with chart in heaven. Can I help you? If I were to go to my daddy and say, hey, daddy, you my daddy. I didn't, I didn't ask to be brought into this world. I didn't have nothing to do with it. That's you and mama's doings. And I want some money to go to the fire. Give me $5, you my daddy. I, I, you call that boldness? I call it ignorance. I would wake up in a coma. With an oxygen tent and hoses up my nose. Are y'all listening? You don't go to your daddy with that kind of attitude. And I hear among even our circles, people going to demand God for something. No, no, you don't demand God. With fear and trembling, we approach God. He said, oh Lord, I've heard thy speech, verse 2, and I was afraid. Oh Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the days. Not only the fear, but the focus of his prayer. So much of our prayers become self-centered. Now, Lord, get me a new Corvette. Lord, help me to find the right. Lord, get me a good-looking man. That's for somebody besides me. Young girls pray selfishly. Young boys pray selfishly. Lord, give me a national platform. Give me a position. Give me a title. No, it's not about. If you take care of God's business, look up in it. I guarantee you he'll take care of your business. I, I own more today than I would have ever thought I would have had access to. The Lord's been so good to me. Y'all listen. And the Bible says if you delight yourself in the law of the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. I want to help you just a minute. Man, when's the last time you prayed for this ministry specifically? We talk about it all the time, but I'm talking about earnest. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. They make fun of our prayer meetings down in the south. Some people visit, they get nervous around it. But there must be a difference between effectual, fervent prayer or he wouldn't have put it in there. Y'all have to scream at God. Y'all think God can't hear you. And I've, I've had people kind of attack our prayer like that. I just thought, God help you, sir. Yeah, that's right. Effectual, fervent. I mean, when's the last time you got fervent in prayer? When's the last time you got up off your knees and a bead of sweat on your brow? When Jesus prayed, he sweat as it were great drops of blood. And our little old potato string backbone, little old small mouth. I call them perch Christians. Now, Heavenly Father, you know, little small fish Christians. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Little bluegill, little, little brim. Our Heavenly Father, we pray that thou wouldest bless our family. And we pray that thou would bless Dr. Trooper in this great work and let us see at least two or three saved once in a while, Lord. And we would pray that you would meet the needs. Little old, little old tiny mouth. But my Bible said, open our mouth wide. What well, we need some of them large mouth bass Christians. Say, oh God, I pray that thou would open the windows of heaven and pour down a blessing on us. Now, Father, we would ask you, know, Father. We would not want to strain you, Father, in asking too much for because we know that thou art a busy God. God help us. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. 
in the hills they're standing on and the taters under the hill. God, hey, he's in control, friend. He can meet the need for your life. We ought to call on him. There's faith in his prayer. Now I've got to my text. That's all introduction. Y'all ready for the message? Look at chapter 16 again, that I might find rest in the day of trouble. Now, honest to God, here comes the message. Well, it took me a long time to get here. And I'm sorry, but man, I've about preached out, bless God. I'm, I'm coming in for a landing here in a minute. Y'all, and if they had any water up here, look what kind of water they give me to preach with. A thimble. That's city water right there. <coughs> I tasted the rust in the pipes on that. <laughs> Watch it. I had some water I could preach, bless God. <coughs> I said it somewhere. I was preaching. They gave me a little old glass. I said, man, that ain't enough water. And I preached. But I said about five minutes worth. Next night, they gave me a thimble up there about that much. Watch it. That I might find rest in a day of trouble. Now verse 17. I think he had already prepared that things just might turn out. Just might not turn out the way he anticipated. He's heard the judgment of God. Now I'm not trying to be negative. I'm trying to be honest. God still blesses. I believe God can still send revival. But things may not happen like you think they're going to happen. Verse 17, now let's look at it. Although the fig tree shall not blossom. Is that negative or positive? Let's be honest. Neither shall the fruit be in the vines, negative or positive. And the labor of the olive tree shall fail, negative or positive. And the field shall yield no meat, negative or positive. Y'all help me, congregation. Come on. Are y'all here? Yes. I'm not ready to dismiss. Are y'all still here? Yes. Let's go back and start again. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, negative or positive. Okay, and neither shall there be fruit in the vines, negative or positive. And the labor of the olive shall fail, negative or positive. And the field shall yield no meat, negative or positive. And the flock shall be cut off from the fold, negative or positive. And there shall be no herd in the stalls, negative or positive. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah, look at this. Come on. Yet. Yet. In spite of it, yet will I rejoice. Yet will I rejoice. You know what he had that helped him find some strength? He had a blessing. He got to count on the good things. What's he going to rejoice about? Well, he said, I may not have any stalls. The crowd not, may not be large. I may not be seen like I want to see it. But I'll rejoice in the Lord. I've got a Savior. And by the way, he is our Savior. Ain't no Buddha can touch him, friend. Ain't no, ain't no Allah look up in here, Muhammad. It ain't, they can't touch our God. He's the only one ever was born like he was born. He's the only one ever lived like he lived. He's the only one ever died like he died. He's the only one ever got up like he got up. And he's the only one ever going to come back, bless God, like he's going to come back. They ain't nobody like him, friend. Ain't nobody like him. Yet will I rejoice. I still got a Savior. I, I mean, look up in here. Don't let these charismatics steal your joy. I know y'all, we Baptists, we don't do it that way. But what are you going to do with that word shout and praise and lifting up hands? And, and that crowd wants to clap all the time. Let me just say a word about that. It says it three times. I think it's three times in the Bible, but six times in the word, the words clap. One of them was when Job was talking about people making fun of him, clapping and hissing like we would to get cows up out of the barn. Get up here, get up here. That one in Psalms that they like to use, clap your hands, oh, you people. The next word said, and shout. Right. It's funny, that crowd likes all that clapping. They're scared to death that shouting. Yeah, well, they like to pick and choose. They got, that, they got that Burger King religion. You know, have it your way. What they need is that Wendy's religion, old-fashioned, hot and juicy, bless God. <laughs> all that picking what you want and taking what you don't. I don't, I don't go for that. What, 
we got, we've let these charismatics scare us away from praising God. I'm just uncomfortable. I went to some, I went to your church one time, and the parishioners had their hands up. Well, we got a little Bible for that, and they want to take. Well, lift up holy hands. That may, all that lifted up hands said, lift up holy hands. Said he said, would men will pray if we're lifting up holy hands without wrath or doubt? What holy hand? What do you do when you surrender? What's the first thing you do when you've given up? You know what that means? That means, Lord, you got it. What you do when they tell you to stick it up? It's you, Lord. No control. Holy hands. We're not talking about holy. We're talking about hands that had been confessed. The sins have been confessed. We're not talking about you're perfect. What's that mean? If you're not perfect, you can't raise your hand in church? That's silly talk. Is everybody okay? And by the way, I like to be in meetings where they raise their hands and they don't have any questions. Amen. Praise. Don't y'all die on me right here. Some of you ain't ever going to find no rest till you learn to worship God and free up just a little bit. It'd be good for your bursitis just one time. We got to have massage therapy. Look up in here. And aromatherapy. All you need is a good Wednesday night of whoo. It'll help you. Well, I'm just uncomfortable. You know, what you going to do? Ma'am, what are you going to do in heaven when you get there? I'm, I'm going to be real careful. I don't offend anybody, you know, because I don't like to offend people. <laughs> let a woman keep silent in the church. If you believe that, you wouldn't let her sing. You wouldn't let her test. You sure wouldn't let her testify. Silent. You talk. What that means, you serve an authority over man in the context of interpreting tongues. Everybody Okay. Look up in here. You ought to learn to praise God. If anybody, those disciples came back. They came back. And they said, oh, Jesus said, you ought to have been there. You know what they told him. He said, we've been cast out them devils. You ought to have been there. These demon possessed men. Eyes rolling back. We cast out the devils. You ought to have been there. Jesus said, oh, rejoice not that you demons are subject to you. That ain't nothing. That's what that interpreted. That ain't nothing. That's in the received. Amen. That ain't nothing. What he said was, but rather rejoice yes, that your name has been written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. If your name has been written in the Lamb's book of life, you've got a King James Bible route to rejoice. I'm talking about a King James Bible. Look up in here, permission to worship and praise God. Amen. 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 You ought to learn. Some of you wives ought to learn why you're washing your dishes just to look around and praise God. If you're scared to start in church, start at the dish. Saint. And got to look, start looking at the sink that God gave you. And the cupboards that he gave you. And the refrigerator that he gave you. And the side-by-side -side freezer and refrigerator. And thank God for the carpet on the floor and the hardwood floor. And thank God for the... Go walk down the hall and look at the pictures of them young ones. I'm starting to feel something on this right now. Walk down there and look at the pictures of them babies and them grandbabies. I, I guarantee you, hey, you go to looking around, there'll be a little bit of praise well up on the inside of you. You've got a Savior who's met every need you've ever had. And the God of my salvation, praise God, we're saved. He said, I find rest and a blessing. Not only is he God of my salvation, I have a Savior, I have a salvation. But he said, he'll make my feet like hind's feet, that last verse. He goes back to the Psalms and pulls out that text. He's a God who gives strength and stability. Now, I'm through preaching. Y'all have listened good. And I appreciate the way y'all have listened this week. You've been very good listeners. And there's a danger the Bible said, take heed when you think you stand, lest you fall. But let me say that you ought to praise God that you want to be here. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to prop you up. Yeah. But not everybody on the West Coast is a part of this kind of church. Right. Not, everybody at, not everybody at North Valley Baptist Church is back tonight that was here this morning. Yeah. Not everybody likes it like you like it. I mean, man, you know I'm long-winded. You came anyway. God help you. My wife had to come, but y'all didn't have to. You came anyway. You've heard me preach three or four times this week. I don't have but one message and 52 titles. Amen. Hear the same thing every time. I'm against it. Amen. Y'all listening? But you wanted to come. It was January, two years ago in January, and I'm through with this illustration, I'll be through. 
two years ago, man, them ice cream sandwiches. I hope they're not melted. But I can drink them just like I can eat them. Amen. We call, we, hey, praise God. We call them blizzards. Amen. It's January cold, single digits back in Tennessee. It was on a Sunday night. We just had a Sunday night service. Can I testify? And I'm through. We just had a communion. We had the Lord's table. And it was a special Lord's table. We, we, had, we had never had one just like this. I mean, meeting broke out. They got to singing them old songs about the blood. Yeah, come on. One, one, one old guy got to sing the Andre Kraut song, that blood ain't lost its power. It reaches yeah. to the highest mountain. Yeah. Hey, I don't care if Andre did write it. It's got God on it. Yeah. And man, I, man we, we, got, we got full. We got to shouting around that Lord's table. You say, that's not reverent. Oh, it was if the Holy Ghost said, get it done. We'd sing another song, hymn about the blood. Man, we was weeping. People come to the altar. Man, it was a good service. After it was over, I saw a horse. Brother, Brother Martinez, I was just talking about my kids. And this little old church up in Upper Peninsula, Michigan. I'm talking about on the border of Upper Peninsula, Michigan. And it's January in Tennessee and it's single digits. And little old church couldn't afford to fly me in. I, I was sure of that because I'd mentioned it to the preacher and he stalled, you know. Yeah. Oh, well, so I just dismissed it. I told the deacon it was going to ride with me. I said, we're going to leave right after church because we got a long way to go. We got in the car. We started up that road, got to Nashville, and it went from single digits to zero when we got to Nashville, Tennessee. Now, when it's zero in Nashville, Tennessee, look up in here. She's real cold in Michigan. Let's concur. Everybody together now. It's cold up there. We start up the way and I noticed, man, that things are dropping. We got, we got about to the Kentucky line and my deacon friend leaned over and said, hey, Brother Tony. He said, man, you wore out. He said, that preacher would understand. He said, why don't you just call the dude and tell him we had a long service. Your back, belly, and both sides hurting. You know, just tell him you can't go. Just tell, man, if he's a preacher, he'll have to understand. Y'all still listening? Said he'll understand. Said just tell him. And man, it's so far up there, over 500 something miles one way up there. And you're driving and it's so cold. Ain't, and who's going to, who in the world have a meeting in the Upper Peninsula, Michigan in January? Well, I mean, what are you going to do? Drive snowmobiles to church? <laughs> he, he said, man, he said, won't you just call the guy? He'll have, and, and I said, well, I probably should. And I, man, I, and I ain't, I don't even, and then I got to thinking more and more. Man, now y'all, I can't, but them Yankees, man, I can't stand to hear them talk. I saw you guys, amen, praise the Lord, pastor, hallelujah, glory to God, amen, praise the Lord. I was just like, Ugh. And all their music is, you know, is, 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 I mean, just... The Wizard of Oz. You know what I'm saying? It's like the line on the Wizard of Oz. Every, every song. I mean, I'm sure that stuff's good in its place, but God help every song. Woo, 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 woo. I thought, man, I'm going to have to bring a Walkman and put my choir on and just kind of <laughs> get a groove for I can preach, man. I, I mean, woo, woo, woo. I mean, I just, man, I can't. I got to think. Man, I got to hear. I'd rather hear a chainsaw run. Oh, yeah. That sounds good to me, man. I, I mean, I just, I thought, oh. And then you got to eat their food. God help casseroles. When you cross out of Kentucky and it Indi into Indiana, everything's casserole. <laughs> Sir, look up here at me. If your wife don't cook at least two meats, look up here. Three good vegetables, cornbread and biscuit. You got gypped. You gypped. Man, I thought I got to eat that stuff. I mean, it's cold, man. We got up about, about central Indiana and it dropped down to dash one, negative one. I said, man, this thing's broke. It ain't never said dash one. I ain't ever been nowhere where it said dash one. Dash one, man, and she's cold. It was so cold you could lay your head up against the glass and it hurt, burnt. I told him, I said, oh, let's go on. They expected me, let's go on in here. We kept driving, we hours in the morning. Finally came up about daylight, pulled into the motel. Honest to God, y'all think I'm telling a, a story? Look up in here. It's honest to God's truth. We got out. 
When I got out of the car, there were seven husky dogs and a bobsled. <laughs> Wheat straw and their food, they'd been mixed in dog food with water and it had frozen. And they was laying there on wheat straw. And I said, Brother Vaughn, you've made a wrong turn. We're in Alaska. <laughs> we had to, I did a rock race, man. We had to, I mean, honest, they was, I mean, when you're in a place where they have husky dog races, you're too far up north. <laughs> that is the mission field. That's a foreign soul. And it was all, I got it. When I breathed the first breath of air, it was so cold that the snot in my nose froze. My nose hair, I'm not kidding, you know, my nose hairs froze. The tears on my eyelashes, when, when, when my eyes would water, they froze on the hair on my eyelashes. I said, man, it's too cold for man, our beast. I went in that motel room, couldn't understand a word the lady was saying. She couldn't understand me. We started writing notes back and forth. <laughs> She said something about a casserole. I said, uh -uh. <laughs> God help. Got out that evening, seven o'clock Monday evening. We six thirty. We started the church. We pulled up in the church driveway. And the church, honestly, you could set the church inside this 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 platform. We pulled on the ground. Ground crashed. Wasn't nobody there. Preacher wasn't even there. Devil started telling, "Look here, you wasting your time, wearing your body down, beating your family back home. Church, trying to build a church on the road all the time. These people don't care anyway. I don't know what you're doing up here. You, 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 you don't turn around now." I said, "I know it, devil. You're right. This is way ain't nobody coming to meeting like you. Find sure enough, here come the preacher in. He is all excited, smiling." Boy, I've been listening to your choir on the internet. I said, well, you ought to have brought a tape. <laughs> sure enough, people, two or three, four or five, I think we had about 12 or 14 in the service, and every one of them, hi, Pastor Hudson. <laughs> I was just going, ah. They called on one to sing. I'm talking about, you talk about dead. Dead and thrice plucked up by the roots. I mean, ain't nobody could have smiled if they wanted to. It's hurting their ears. Anybody sing like it, it hurt the people singing. Amen. <laughs> Sound like a spaceship coming in for a landing. <laughs> Somebody help me. Man, I, I got up there. I bound that poop and opened my Bible. Well, take your Bibles. And I got to bragging on Jesus. How he's born from a virgin's womb. How they lived a vicarious death. He substituted himself for ourself on a tree. And how that it pleased Jehovah to bruise him. And I got to bragging on Jesus. About halfway in that thing, I got to feeling that breeze from the third heaven hit me on the back of the neck. It didn't matter to me if it was two or 2,000. Man, I got to preach him with a touch of God. And I got through, I gave an invitation, listen to this. And right from the back row, four precious souls stepped out. Amen. Come walking down that aisle. Got down there in the front, got on the altar, and four of them got saved by the grace of God. Well, I still get excited about four getting saved. I, 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 amen, I can't help it. I got excited about that one girl getting saved this morning at church. I got excited about these getting saved this morning at this altar. Four precious souls came down. Got a, I got in there with them, got to praying with them. I got to feeling like being at church. Man, I would give a 30-minute longer invitation. There wasn't but 12 people in there. I just, I mean, I just get 30 minutes longer. People getting inside, I want to get recapped. Amen? I mean, it done cranked it up. You know what I said? I'm glad I came. I'm glad I came. I got the praise in God that he gave me a want to. Look up in there. He said, I'm glad I've got a Savior. I'm glad I got a salvation. But he said, I'm glad I've got some stability. You ought to thank God for a place like this that caulks you and keeps you going. Let's stand together, heads are bowed and eyes are closed.